<laughs> Hello to anyone watching. Now it's live. Yeah. Hello, yeah. Hey, George, how you doing? How's it going? Are you right? Yeah, not too bad, thanks, man. How's it all going? Yeah, it's all good, yeah. We're, <laughs> we're, we're in Detroit at the moment. 21 watching, God. <clears throat> yeah, we're in Detroit. Hello. and we're, um, It's been a shock to the system getting back on tour, uh, so we're pretty knackered but the gigs have been amazing so far it's been so nice to like you know be back in rooms with smiling faces and people singing along and all the rest of it um and feel like hearing all the songs come to life in the room every night it's been amazing and murph is hopefully on his way soon um again the uh the touring lifestyle with 14 hour bus journeys kind of makes your sleep pattern go a little bit a uh, bit wonky <laughs> How are you doing, Callum? How's are you in London? Yeah, no, I'm in London. I'm in London. Um, yeah, no, I'm all right. I'm all right. I've literally just moved house a couple of weeks ago, so behind me is all carnage and chaos pushed to one side. Um, but yeah, no, I've, I've not been too bad. Just a, a steady start to 2022. Well, um, moving home isn't isn't that supposed to be one of the most stressful things to that and funerals? <laughs> I've blocked the Zoom. Callum? Oh, we lost them. Oh, yeah. You're oh, back. back. It's, was that us or was that you? I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I looked at the picture up afterwards. I think mine was okay. Literally, so I, don't know. Yeah. I just sat there for a few seconds with everyone watching with me. Yeah. Hey, Sorry, everyone. Got... Well, lots of people saying hello. Hello. I don't know from we, Spain. Don't know Hi from can, Spain. I don't know if we can write back on this chat, but we're, we're seeing what you're all writing and uh, connection, connection is poor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll just do a speed test. Uh, Sinbad at play again. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> that fucking Sinbad, Sinbad is, keeps on Sinbad. <clears throat> oh, yeah. So. We have this kind of imaginary um, demon god that kind of tries to punish us and make our life difficult, but we just oh. kind of, we're fighting back all the time. Uh, that's kind of how we get through everything. And if the schedule's a little tricky, then we're just like... Uh, Sinbad, Sinbad is here. He's oh, on Sinbad. Sinbad. Oh, Sinbad's actually just arrived. Yeah. Bed bugs of Sinbad. Yeah. <laughs> Sinbad, his hotel room, he had bed bugs last night, so he probably didn't sleep very well. Oh, classic. That. The American world. So he actually sent us, like... sent us a video and like you could see these little fuckers crawling around. Ugh. Yeah, I would struggle with like. Pretty oh, rooms. Yeah. Were well, you just jumping around on your bed like trying to splat? I wanted that and then I called and I like packed my bag, went downstairs, said just bed bugs in my room. This has got, got a load of. I got, bad, a load... I bad. Bad. got a load of attitude from the front desk. <laughs> Lovely. How are we going to get all uh, this in there? Well, we'll figure it out. But the main thing is we get. Oh. Just sit down. I don't think there's um, any men voting, so we're good. I think it's fluff. Let me just um, get some questions up. Okay. Well, Callum's frozen. Um, you're hearing the voice of someone eating. Yeah, that's that's old Chewy McChewison over here. Um, having what are you eating, Matt? A little RX bar and a coffee. Yeah, post workout. Even the gym. Already. Callum's got a new link, so hopefully he'll be back. Um, oh, he's gone. So we might as well answer some of these questions. Uh, all right, Marco. Hopefully that's sorted out the. The, oh, um, lovely one the to question do by Enrique. Oh, Enrique, why the wombat's name? Cool. Well, we were in, uh, me and Murph went to Australia one time before, just when the band was starting, and his uncle had won the lottery. We ended up sat around a campfire in the outback, and um, this like group of wombats, or a wisdom of wombats, as they're called, came along. Um, and we, it was just a spiritual moment, and we they, felt they spoke to us, yeah. um, and there was no. There was no like lysergic acid involved at all in the experience. They no. just came up and started speaking to us and said, "You will form a band, and they will, and you will be called the Wombats." So yeah, 
basically. And they also said, watch out for your nemesis, Sinbad. But um, <laughs> we only really started noticing him. Like, we really like him. Um, so, yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Um, I quack. I caught your drumstick in Philly. Good catch. Um, I hope you're going to make use of it. It's great for, like, if you're, if you're bored and you whack your friend's, like, leg as hard as you can and then let them whack you and see who can, like, last the longest. That's always kind of fun. Where well, you can Wait. use the drumstick to respond out of your nose. Yeah, that's, that's, that's as good. well. Yeah, that's yeah. really good. Sometimes Simbad can get really stuck up the old hooter. Rowan Castro, you need to know how tall you guys are. Um, I'm about six foot, so in, and in meter, one meter 83. You must be so sort of similar. When I stand up, sorry. Yeah. Is that me, uh, Murph? You're right. Is that me back? <laughs> Sorry about that. So, we're just trying to get the Wi Fi sorted here. It was working fine earlier. Mike, you can hear me all right? It's crazy. Argentina. It's not the best, but. Argentina can't wait. To, we can't wait to come to Argentina as well. It'll be the um, first time. Yeah. Yeah. Buenos Aires, here we come. Um, so, should we, uh, Callum, now that this seems to be working, um, let's dig in. Questions? Yeah, go for it, go for it. Otherwise, we're just going to talk absolute horse shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, so let's, uh, let's Which go. is great. Which is great. Yeah. I mean, having verbal diarrhea really helps with these kind of rodeo vibes. Um, yeah, yeah. So, right, here we go. Um, who are each of the band's go to Mario Kart characters for racing? And that's from Indie Scientist. I haven't really played it much. Have you played it much? So Todd hasn't played it much. Um, um, Luigi, that's if, if you can be Luigi. This is for you. Yeah. Who, who's your go-to yeah, character? Yeah. So you're Luigi. I thought it was you. No, no, no. I'm. Um, I actually got a switch during lockdown, <laughs> and, and me and my girlfriend played like every day for about two months. Um, and I was Yoshi, uh, the little kind of green turtle. Um, I was going to say I was the green turtle. Oh yeah, you know, she's a beast. Tortuga. Yeah, love him. Tortuga. Go for the Tortuga as well. Tortuga, isn't that a Breaking Bad? <laughs> that, yeah, Roman Castro, that, that's, I mean, with the moustache kind of in the, in the video, definitely do have sort of Luigi. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, I was going to say, one of the like big influences on the video was um like Wacky Races from back in the day. And I thought oh, yeah. they had like, that whole like Dash Dastardly thing going on. Yeah. <laughs> you know, with Muttley and the dog, but yeah. Yeah. What other chat people saying about my moustache? Did anyone notice? I mean, it's Baby pretty dire like, but I thought should, it was it, right. should it come back one day? Big I thought question. it looked good on camera. Yeah. <laughs> I think, yeah, to play the super villain, did that influence you in making me the one like chucking the banana skin and stuff? Oh, God, I don't, I don't, it was, um, <laughs> To, I don't know why, but it just sort of seemed like between you and Todd, it was the kind of thing you'd probably do over Todd. I don't know why. <laughs> it's just kind of what came out. Um, but yeah, it, it worked. Yeah. Todd was just very focused on the race, I guess. Yeah, I was going to try try my best to win it. But... Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, there's a... oh, so sorry. Who's your, um, Callum, who's your go to Mario Kart character? Oh, I think. I say I've never had any like Nintendo games, but I, whenever I did, I was always Toad. I think. Oh yeah. Back in the day, I don't. I don't know why. There was just something a bit like, a bit rogue about him. Like quite liked. You know, he's not one of the main characters, but as you say, he gets the job done. So yeah, no, yeah. probably probably Toad. I remember, like, got to the point where you know you can choose like what wheels you have, what like what your little flight glide is like, and all the car and like. You get really peaky with all the different speeds and stuff. It's really, um, I don't know if it makes any difference, but no, not at all. My victory ratio was off the charts. I was constantly jumping around the room celebrating. Um, <laughs> so, another question. Um, well, Sammy Soros just asked, How long did it take you to make the video slash edit it? That's um, probably the question. I mean, it depends. It, I suppose it depends what you mean by make it. To, to actually shoot it, it was all shot in one day. Um, it was a long day, 
because you know say it's, it's it's quite it's quite a long song and i think that was one of the one of the things was trying to like cover the whole thing and make it interesting um yeah so it took one day to shoot but we probably planned it for maybe five weeks beforehand um which is quite quite a long prep for something like that but there was say there were so many moving parts with it and then the edit actually wasn't too i think the edit was only about two weeks which again is quite long for something like that but i, I was quite once you got like i think i don't know if the first draft of it changed too much to the finished finished part of it um so yeah i'd say you know maybe maybe 10 days to edit the whole process probably eight weeks i think from because we shot it early december finished it mid-december and then i can't remember when the first email came through about it but it was probably probably mid october i think i can't really remember it was so it feels like it was ages ago <clears throat> so, yeah. it's for like four minutes isn't it yeah it's amazing what you do for yeah for four or five minutes but um I think because the song was so complex, so, sort of like complex, and there were so many moving parts with it, you wanted to try and match it with the, with the film, and there was it was such a balancing act of trying to keep it engaging, keep it realistic with what we had, and when, you know, when you get when you get a song called "This Car Drives All by Itself," you need to have a car in there somewhere, so trying to um, trying to actually get the driving element in was was quite um, quite a challenge initially because. Say once you once you're hiring a car, it becomes quite complicated for for other things going on. So, uh, yeah, I think it took me about two weeks to write the whole thing, and I could normally write something in about two days. Um, so writing it was actually really difficult, and I yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, I think I think that answered the question. I kind of I kind of dribbled on there a little bit. Yeah, no, the um, like the whole the whole mini model and like the scale electrics thing just looked so amazing. Like whoever the yeah. Um, yes. The designer who did that like I, I remember meeting the, the lady and she'd spent yeah. like ages making it and it was the, the level of detail, the detail, detail was so. just yeah it was, it was Kate, katie south shout out katie south she did she did a really good job on that um because so it was all say it's, it all kind of came from initially from obviously the album artwork we wanted to have that city and because i mean actually with the, the original idea for it when i when i was writing it was i wanted to get to build to get like a big warehouse and build a city a big city out of cardboard boxes and then have you guys in go-karts driving around it um but i think i was maybe a bit ambitious with that because <laughs> um, <laughs> that that would have been that would be massive um and i just yeah try, then it then it came down to scaling it down and it was going to be a smaller city but with remote like rc cars um and then I realized trying to film RC cars and get all the movements consistent would be really, really, really difficult. Mm. Um, so then that went to Scale Electrics. And then we kind of, yeah, we brought, brought Scale Electrics track around the city, which we brought in, say, me and Katie just spent ages looking at the, the album artwork and looking at all the little, little, all the little Easter eggs that are kind of in it. And then actually we looked a lot at the, your, uh, the Guide to Love, Loss and Desperation artwork. Mm-hmm. And brought in loads of because there's loads of little props in the background of that, which I don't know if they, I don't know how many ended up because there's, there's so I don't know how many got featured actually in that video, but it's like the chattering teeth are in there somewhere. I don't know if you can see them, but say there's there's loads of them. Um, there's loads of little Easter eggs in there from from stuff that you you guys have done. Obviously, you've got the little one bat as well. Um, <laughs> but it's say that was kind of the great thing about the concept you could. Because it was just meant to kind of be pulled out of like a child's imagination. You could go anywhere with it, and so it was. Uh, I think, it, uh, yeah. And I, I was, I was really happy with how the city. She had it built in her bedroom for about a two two weeks, just gradually adding bits to it. And me and the DOP, uh, Tom English, would go around and uh, just try out little bits, just see what you could do with it. And um, yeah, yeah, so many ideas. Going. Yeah, she, she really smashed it. Yeah, so good. Yeah, amazing. And just seeing the scale electrics, like I hadn't seen one since I was probably like twelve in my dad's attic. No, <laughs> it's, um, yeah, I can't, yeah, I can't remember the last time I played one of those. My brother had one when I was younger, but we we bought it. We got some guy off eBay to build the actual track and to buy us the cars. And he was at because our plan was obviously to get the cars and we painted all the cars and we did all that. And this guy was like a proper scale electrics enthusiast. Uh, when he found she told Katie told him what we were going to do 
and he said, "Well, you can't paint these. These are like vintage scale electrics cars. You can't, you can't do this." And he was, uh, so she had to lie to him and say that we weren't going to do everything that we actually did. So I really hope that he's not watching this or hasn't seen it <laughs> because, um, because we, uh, we might have one of the cars like the, for the shots where you can actually see the car going through the city. We, um, we took off the casing of the car, and it's actually just a GoPro just taped onto the top of it, which worked really well. Um, but that it was a in theory, one of his like vintage scale electrics cars that we just had to rip apart to attach a camera to. <laughs> um, so he'll be, yeah, he'll be gutted if he sees that, but finger crossed, fingers crossed he hasn't. Yeah. Um, so there's another question for you, Callum. How did you find working with the young actors in the video? Because I guess none of us actually, so, we, didn't, we didn't like film any scenes with them, didn't I? So yeah. No, there was, there, was, there was Gaia, Declan and Eddie um yeah it was it, it's, when they, they always say when you when you've been working in film it's like two things don't work with it's like don't work with children and don't work with animals um but yeah it's, it's actually the first time i've directed people and you did both on this one you worked with the one bats very and... good yes no, yeah. <laughs> yes they're very true um yeah no they they were great yeah they, they absolutely they absolutely smashed it. i think it's um I mean, they, they, they're not, they're really not really kids. They're, they're, I suppose they're, they were, they're all above 16. I think Ga the Gaia, the, the leading, uh, leading lady was, is 18. So, you know, they're, they're, they're pros. They know, they know, they know what they're doing. They, they were great. Yeah, they were great. Um, took direction really well. And, um, yeah, it was just, I mean, it's such a, it's a, it's such a fun concept where basically all you're really asking people to do is sit and scream at a track and, um, at like you're winning at, at competitive and you know the the scenes that we shot with them weren't actually particularly long in the grand scheme of the day we've only shot i think we only shot like maybe together five or six shots with all of them with using them um so there was just there was so much to get that we just had to like rattle it off quite quickly in the day but yeah they, they were great they were they were really good fun Speaking of screaming as well, I think one of the funnest uh, moments of the day was when we all had to do the like yeah. final going over, the, you know, towards the finish line screaming. Yes. I remember we were, we were downstairs, weren't we? And all of a sudden, it's like hearing all this screaming from upstairs. Yeah. You guys were filming, and I was like, something wrong here. You know, like it's almost like <laughs> you yeah. know, I've seen them myself or whatever. But it was just uh, it was you, wasn't it? Screaming. Yeah. <laughs> Murph just screaming. Uh, no. But, like uh, the final that was, that was so much that was so much fun yeah it's um because it was you guys screaming but me screaming at you guys as well yeah, yeah. more and then i can remember when we did yours toward we yeah. obviously did this i said the same thing i said to all you guys but i didn't know that you were going to scream in norwegian yeah <laughs> and, and, it just, and it all just came out and it just completely took me back um and i think i went over to you afterwards, Dan, you like you said, or someone said, like, oh, you don't want to know what he was saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, the girl from the label, me, you know, she, uh, she's Norwegian as well, so she obviously understood everything. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. I think was it that was that was probably the most fun shot to shoot, in my opinion. But the other favorite part of the day for me was when we were shooting the first shot with Murph, and we had to pause after that first shot. Because you were like, you just you stopped probably through the looks, and I was like, oh, is, is everything okay? I didn't know what's up. You go, yeah, yeah, no, I just can't act. <laughs> and I, was like, I was just like, oh god, yeah, um, that that really cracked me up. Just uh, what was this like? Like oh well, I had a, I was jet lagged with a wedgie for like seven hours, but um, <laughs> because my, my suit was too tight, was too tight. <laughs> like, but he, he battled through it. <laughs> So like that one. was yeah luckily there was, luckily there was a lot of it was a, a lot of sitting down shots um yeah. a lot of mid shots let's say uh yeah that was um i'm not quite sure what happened there but i think we i think we recovered it well yeah <laughs> no i think you said uh, so you explained what i was about to do and you were like so do you understand are you cool with that and i was like well no because i can't <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah no i was i wasn't prepared for that <laughs> I think um, it was good that he didn't tell us in advance as well the kind of you know the screaming bits and all the rest of it because it was kind of just very much in the moment like right yeah see what happens and also it's really fun screaming and you don't really you just get lost yeah, and hence why all the swearing and 
profanity has come out. She just yeah, it's, it's, it's like, it's, I can remember, because <laughs> obviously it was, I think it was filmed at like 100 frames a second, so it's slowed down by like four. And so you, you, you film it at like high speed, like regular speed. And it, you know, it looks hilarious. And then you watch it back, and it looks even more hilarious. And uh, the facial expressions just get more exaggerated. And um, yeah, that was, that was that was probably the funnest part of the, the actual shoot. You should release some bloopers from, or just some moments of that—the screaming, yeah. like with no sound. Or anything. There was, there was so much to pick from. There's so they like for like considering it's such a small part. Each shot's only about like a second and a half. But the actual the amount of footage we got, we've got like three minutes for each person of just wow. various facial expressions. Did um, you did it in, in slow mo? Did you film it in slow mo? Yeah, yeah, no, it's, so it's filmed. Let's say, uh, I think it's shot at ninety six frames, so that's that's four times slower than what we, what you would see. If you listen to that, the audio would it literally be like? Oh, if you if you if, if you with those cameras we shot on a red so reds do take sound very quietly but only at 24 25 frames a second once you start going slower it doesn't record sound okay. so there's no there's no sound to marry with that clip unfortunately but i'm sure we could make some to go with it <laughs> <laughs> um yeah um, yeah that was that was good um so electro tartar asks um was there a way that you chose the colours for each of the members' cars? Were the colours chosen or assigned? Um, I suppose it was because the whole campaign has been based off like the Rubik's cubes. Was like that was like one of the like because in that video and the Ready for the High video, the one the, the kind of only notes that I've been given for them is like it's got to have a Rubik's cube in there. So there's always been um, the the primary colours in there, and I think it was it was it was always going to be red and blue and then i was trying to decide between green and yellow um and we ended up we just ended up doing yellow and then obviously you can see at the start of the video when murph stood on the rubik's cube the three sides that are facing you've got the blue side the red side the yellow side so that's kind of like it's just based off off that that's probably just the other the other the, there was a brief conversation about having white and doing three minis like the italian job but i just thought that was maybe a little <laughs> bit on the nose um just just not not as um not as kind of because the whole city is kind of like slapped to get meant to be slapped together by kids um i thought if there was three minis like no one has just three mini coopers lying around for this electric track they just have a load of random stuff yeah um so yeah that yeah um in terms but then i guess in, if they're saying where they assigned it would be where they picked or where they assigned in terms of like you as a band i don't you didn't pick colors i think i just assigned them no. to you guys Oh yeah, no, we didn't have a clue. Yeah. What's going on? We turned <laughs> up. Not wedgie. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag jet lag with a wedgie. God. <laughs> God. Yeah, that, you were jet lagged as well. You just arrived as a. I didn't realise you were jet lagged on that. Actually, I'm God. Sorry. No, no, no. It was great. <laughs> that might have been Sinbad's first mission. <laughs> 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 That was it. If, um, so um, I guess Simbad's probably like a bit of a Zeus character who likes to just toy with humans yeah. and put them in weird situations. Um, so uh, Amber Davidson asks, "What was the inspiration behind this video? Have we have we covered that already?" Or? I guess we. I think we uh, we kind of covered it. I think I wrote like yeah. I think I wrote a couple of things down, but like generally it was trying to find. I mean, the whole thing, because this is, I say, it's such a long and kind of varied song. The whole thing was kind of like trying to write a short film um, that needed to be five minutes long and engaging for the whole thing. Um, the inspiration, I guess, the main inspiration was, let's say, you got Mario Kart. Um, I'm trying to think what video references I even had. There's a Rag and Bone Man video, was it All, All I Ever Wanted, that does loads of like miniature things, which I thought was amazing. Um, so that was that was a big that was a big influence on it, um, and then yeah, it's just the the album artwork and just just generally the campaign, just trying to make that come come to life, I guess. Um, mm. Put you guys in that world, and then um, I do you know that was what I talk about. The first thing, the only thing that I was really sent at the start was um, the quote that you sent, Murph, which was, was it, um, "We row the world st was it the world steers was that it? 
Uh, we row what the university is, yeah. We row what the university is. So I guess it's just that kind of who's really in control. And then obviously there's references, reference to the kids aren't wrong. So it, the whole thing kind of just came together into that, like that whole metaphor of, you know, you think you're having this big, exciting race and you're, you're having a big influence on it, but actually, you know, it's not you at all. It's uh, someone else who's in control and dictating how it all goes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I guess we've kind of, um, I guess we kind of talked about everything else to do with the influence, but, um, Mm. Yeah, if, there, if there's anything else. We have a, a question from BPWRYL. How many bananas did Dan have to eat? I think I only ate. Did I only eat two? I think you ate two because originally we had a load of bananas cut up for you. And we were like, here's the banana. And it didn't look great. <laughs> so, was it. You, yeah. you gave me a really peel banana. Right. Here's well, a no, banana. We, I want to peel my own banana. We, yeah, we, we had, because originally we had we had like, because like with, with the set, you have like a props table and we had like a load of banana ready to go that was pre-peeled because we only wanted the skin originally because it was meant to be like that Mario Kart thing where you throw the skin. Um, but then I think, I think actually we originally, I didn't even plan on you eating the banana. I think you actually said to me on the day, it's like, oh, and I can eat the banana. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I was like, and so I was like, oh, so now we have, we, we had to like construct a banana from the skin and then put the banana actually back inside it. <laughs> um, which was just the worst way of doing it. Then I think one, I think one of the runners just went and said, like, "I'm going to go get a banana." I was like, "Yeah, that's probably a good idea." So I just <laughs> went when it got a banana. So I think you only I think you went through two. Yeah. But when it, when you were throwing them as well, um, we we shot that like that scene's actually just shot in like a, someone's bedroom. There's this massive bedroom in a house in Bromley with a strange bedroom with a ter yeah with a, this a strange bedroom with a terrifying bathroom bathtub for two with like sofas inside it's like got padded sofa inside the bathroom it's like a jacuzzi i guess carpeted, carpet, like carpeted bathroom with like pink, there's like pink, Roman, Roman sw bed. two swans wasn't it two swan head tabs that oh, were gold yeah. like pillars uh, and like yeah, old man. Uh, yeah yeah it's, 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 it's a it's decorations a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a shady shady place um, <laughs> but like <laughs> But it's, 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 it's a massive watching. bedroom, but I remember you just throw, you throw in the banana. We put a load of stuff down the floor to catch the banana, I think, every time you missed it. So when we got it out afterwards, it was just banana marks all over the floor. Um, and the producer came up, but the producer came up to me afterwards and was like, why is all this banana here? I was like, I don't know. I don't, I don't, know. I don't, know. I don't know how that got there. Someone must have dropped it. Um, so I think, yeah, in answer to your question, two bananas. I've said that many times. Sorry, was that? I know Enrique <laughs> from Spain wanted us to ask for a beer, please. So I did. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, sorry, let's see. Sorry, back to questions. Um, yes, yes. Todd, you've been you've been studying Spanish on your little headphones, haven't you? Oh, that's like ten years ago. Yeah. Um, it didn't really work out. What's the fastest you've ever driven a car? Uh, oh, I know that. Um, about 163. Jesus. What? <laughs> Where did you do that? M6 tall. Whew. In the, yes. in the Metro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what car was it? I never did that, I, yeah, I never, never did that again. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's that was scary, I, got from, yeah. I got from Liverpool to my flat in London, door to door in like two hours. Wow. 30 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, wouldn't advise it. No, I'm trying to think what the fuck. I don't know if I've been more than like 120 uh, miles per hour. I reckon. Uh, yeah. I keep, I keep, I keep to the speed limit to the max. <laughs> the max speed is. <laughs> 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 110 kilometers per hour. That's the max speed limit in Norway. So. We'll be jailed, buddies. Yeah. <laughs> Todd can come and visit us in prison. <laughs> um, uh, uh, what, else, what else we got? We've got. Um, oh, hang on. Uh, oh. The scenes where each of you driving, did you all shoot the same time and place? 
Uh, uh, yeah, so it was it was the the Honestly. morning. The morning we shot you guys driving, um, up in the yeah upstairs in that bedroom while they built the city downstairs. Um, and then afterwards we went downstairs into that living room and shot the city. Um, so yeah, it was, it was all it was all shot in one day. I think. Um, I guess it wasn't, the question was like, it wasn't actually at the same time, you know, we weren't all sat in a car filming at the same time. Oh, no, 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 no. It was, um, yeah, it was, it's, it's, you know, this, the seat is, all we did was change the color of the lighting. It's actually the same, it's the same car the whole time that all of you sat in with the steering wheel that didn't move, um, which I remembered actually watching some of the footage back because the steering wheel on the car was actually just bolted in. So we had to pretend that you could sit there. So you had to slide your hands over the whole, the whole thing. Um, but yeah, no, it was, um, it was all, it was all shot separately. It was all shot in order. I think, yeah. Can Callum direct the Wombats fight 2.0? <laughs> um, have, have you seen the Wombats fight video? I don't think I have, no. What's, oh, what's Wombats fight 1.0? Uh, maybe you, you can watch it at your leisure another time. Yes. Um, you know, no, no spoilers, we, we just had a disagreement on the first album about uh, the track listing and what songs were going to be on there, so... Um, if you just type in the one bats fight, yeah, see if it inspires it. Oh, I'll, I'll see what I'll see what comes up next. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just wait wait for the next album, then we've got it. Yeah. Um I mean it doesn't seem like there are too many more questions here, to be honest. Is it? Um Have I you think... ever got it says have you guys ever been go-karting in any F1 fans? <laughs> Our tour manager's a huge he's go kart a and F one enthusiast. Um, yeah, like he's obsessed. If you wanna, if you wanna sort of um, get, if you need help getting off to sleep, you just ask him about F one. <laughs> literally <laughs> talk to you about the entire season and every single twist and turn for like an hour, non stop. Yeah, and um, I think it's safe to say none of us are remotely interested in. Formula <laughs> <laughs> One. I did watch the Michael Schumacher uh, documentary. Mm. That was really good. I think I've seen the Senna documentary as well, which is amazing. Yeah, yeah. That's, 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 really yeah. that's also really yeah. good. And Rush is obviously a very good film. Um, but past that, some of my mates are massive F1 fans. Um, I like to keep track of the results, but I find the, the races aren't for me, I'd say. I see. Yeah. Um, but we have, we've done some go-karting on tour. Um, but personally, like, on a day off, uh, I realized straight afterwards that doing like fast go karts is really, um, you've got to use your forearms a lot uh, to yeah. and playing drums. Like the next day, I had to take paracetamol to get through the gig. So I had a bad crash. So I was like, got really scared that, like, to, you know, like, to get an injury. Or oh, yeah, you ended up facing like the wrong way. Yeah, and like, like straight, the track straight into me. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I'm not doing this on day. So <laughs> yeah. I'm a terrible driver as well. So obviously, it doesn't help. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's about as far as it goes for car cars. Um, favorite part to film? Screaming bit. Scream. I mean, I think yeah. I really like the the section where the for me sort of nerding out on film stuff. Is the section where we were Murph was spinning in the car is shot with a very specific lens called a cinematic revolution. Um, there's only like two of those lenses in the country that have been broken for years and they happened to fix it just to and we managed to get hold of it for that shot we planned to film loads of the the um loads of the video on it when we shoot in the city but it's a massive lens so for me nerding out that was a really cool shot to film because you actually got to see that working and that come together um, so what is it? is it a lens that like so it's, it's like rotates and spins it's it's actually yeah it's like a prism like you know you can like imagine like a periscope so it goes like that and then it goes down and it, it's a really long lens um and then the actual lens itself spins to make the image spin um it was very excessive what we needed to do for it but um but, but yeah to be able to, to be able to bring that in that was quite cool for me and so, what is the name of the lens again it's called cinematic revolution i'm pretty sure there might be 
if someone watches this back, they might tell me that I'm wrong, but I'm almost certain that's what it was. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a very it's a very niche bit of kit that was that was kind of cool to bring in. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that that was fun. I think just generally filming, just generally filming the little cars and seeing that come together was quite cool as well. Um, but yeah, this the screaming was definitely the, the bit that kind of got everyone going through the day. A very strange comment. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, Enrique's father was very old. I'm not sure the context behind that, but I'm sure he's a legend. Oh, nice to meet you, Enrique. Well, Enrique, yeah. Enrique's father. But yeah, that scene after the spinning and when he. He hits his boost button. It's kind of gutted that we didn't get a fiery boost button as well. Yeah, that, I mean, you, you didn't. You shouldn't have thrown him off the track, I guess. No, I mean, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> you might have had the fiery boost. Yeah, no, it's um, yeah, that that whole sequence worked really nicely. I was happy with the grandma bit as well, actually, because that all had to happen when we were like, you had to have like a function on the control to change lanes in the track, and I didn't know if it was going to work. And then actually seeing that moment where the car's driving towards that granny, and then it swerves off, and it worked. That was the difficulty of the whole day, actually, was just getting getting the cars to work in the way you wanted them to work. They was... That was brilliant acting from you when you'd swerve in to get the grandma. Are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's so good. Yeah, so, yeah, it, it, all, it all came together. It all came together nicely. Um, yeah. But, yeah, that was uh, that was good. What else have we got? Uh, Three in a bit. Do you guys enjoy being on it, like ready for the high, just playing, or the ones with some story behind? Um, I think it's nice mixing it up. Like, kind of depends on the song and what feels right for the video. Um, yeah, it's always nice having like a, a story as well. And you, you never know how bands are going to react when you ask them to do something like that as well, because obviously you guys aren't actors. If you like with the ready for the high video, it's kind of like. You know, you're musicians, you're very good at playing playing instruments. So it's kind of like, yeah, you know you'll be up for that. But what I think I was saying to Todd on the day is like when you write a treatment like like for this video, you have no idea if the band's actually gonna go for it because it's uh yeah. it's a bit out there. I think if someone asked me to do it, I'd probably say no. So <laughs> so yeah, it's uh... <clears throat> Thank you, Isaac Bear. Yeah, that was some real good acting there. <laughs> yeah. Paul Murph always gets injured in music videos. Yeah, to be honest, I, when you first came down from filming upstairs, I didn't realise you were going to be getting injured again. And uh, the, the makeup that they'd done was really believable. Do you know what's actually quite funny with that as well is um, the makeup artist, Emma, didn't... She wasn't aware that we you were going to get blooded up on that day, so she didn't bring any. She didn't have any of her kit to do the blooding, um, and so she. I think she just had to. She she just had to make some on the spot. I think she got like ketchup and some powder or something. So it's all just it's all just. <laughs> <laughs> it's all it's all complete like completely winged it on that, and she she absolutely oh, smashed it. It, it looks great, but yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's 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 just whatever she could find to throw together to do what needed to be done. So yeah, that that worked really well. So what, what I was going to ask you a question: What percentage for you when making a video is like how much of it is thoughtful preparation and how much of it is just an absolute blag fest on the day? Like, what's the percentage of you think? I'd say it's probably genuinely about eighty percent preparation. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, for something like this, it, it kind of absolutely had to be. Like, yeah. if, you know, it's um like, I'll have like a big deck of like paperwork that I'll go through where, because you need, because it's all filmed in a very random order. You need to know that all the parts kind of come together. So you write it out in order beforehand. Um, so you know that if you tick everything off that list, in theory, it should all come together. Um, and then there's just little bits that kind of come out during the day that you think like, oh yeah, if I get that, then I don't need this. So I'd say, yeah, probably about 85% planning. Um, but then shooting something like Ready for the High, it's only, you know, we're, it's like we'll get a wide shot, we'll get mid shot and we're just, that's that's a bit more of a black vest. Yeah. Um, not that I'd ever admit to that, but. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
But yeah, well, like, this, this, <laughs> this was this was a lot of planning. This is this this um yeah this this for probably like probably about two weeks before the shoot. I was like I was stressed trying to work out how it all kind of came together because it's so many like little parts. Um, and then I've got the producer saying, how are we going to get this done in one day? Uh, then the AD saying, how are we going to get it done in one day? And you just kind of have to trust that you will and work out afterwards because so there's not really, there's not really any option to not. I guess um, the more prepared you are, the more you can improvise on the day probably as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's, um, I feel like that's similar to like when we made the album, like obviously, you know, we, we had lots of it prepared and you want to leave enough room to be able to be spontaneous and have those moments in the, in the, you know, when you're all there kind of doing something that yeah. feels exciting and like maybe changes a couple of bits, but you still need to have everything like prepped um, and at least have like, as you say, a tick list of things that you need to definitely get. And then yeah. you, you want to have some of that like 20% to fart around. Yeah. I think was the, the, the main improvised bit was actually just filming the city because you, you know, I know, I know that Katie had made it, um, but you don't quite know what's going to work. It's actually like if you if you pause various parts of the video, you can actually see like crew members in the background and stuff. And when we're like packing down the shoot, and I've just like stuck a camera in and sold someone to drive a car past, you know, it's that it's <laughs> kind of it's kind of that that type of shooting. Um, but other than, you know, in terms of like your reactions, what we're getting from the actors, um, the main the main story is all scripted. But then all the the other little bits, you can kind of be a bit, you can kind of wing it a little bit. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, we've covered. Yeah, I think that's. Yeah, I think that's um. That's a, unless unless there's anything else that anyone kind of wants to know, but like I, I think that kind of covers it. Um. Thanks, Shags Twenty Four. Congrats on the number one album. That was fun. Uh, that was fun. <laughs> Joe Siddle. We do have a new backdrop. Joe Siddle. Uh, it's got the big pixel one back face on it uh but i'm not sure whether that'll be the one in april uh we haven't quite got to that point yet but in the us that's what's sitting behind our heads uh, are you going to film a video for flip me upside down as well don't think i think that's us done with music videos for this album no don't uh, say that <laughs> <laughs> what have we done for that's usually about about five. Oh. Yeah. No, four. Mm -hmm. oh, five, yeah. I think it's five. I think it's oh, five. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, there might be one more. Depends on depends on what Sinbad's saying, really. Yeah. yeah. It depends what Sinbad's saying. Um, yeah, cool. cool. Well, yeah, I think that, I think that, yeah, that kind of covers yeah. it. Thanks everyone for watching. Um, we're going to go off and sound check now. Um, we're playing Detroit tonight, so see some of you there maybe. Um, yeah, a nice one, Callum. Yeah, nice yeah, nice yeah. Thank you. Wonderful. Smash it. Thank you. We'll try. We'll do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice one, everyone. Yeah.